dear uh, facebook pure urology viewers and dear urologists across the india and world uh, as you all know uh, pure urology is conducting surgical technique based programs on daily or alternate day basis uh, so far we have done covering most of the urology topics and uh, i thank all the speakers nearly 95 speakers uh, other than from my place uh, i have given immediate uh, appointment and they have given the best of their uh, video presentations in this forum uh, i thought uh, on the uh, in the facebook lot of the urologists were asking about the instruments related to the pcnl so i thought instead of uh, uh, taking the opinion from the company persons uh, it is better to take the opinion from the urologists and that too who are the pioneers in uh, pcnl uh, today we have the esteemed speakers and very uh, very well knowledgeable academicians and senior urologists so that we can uh, we can share right from the ureteric catheter uh, technique of puncture then depending on the stone volume patient and uh, supine prone and the irrigation uh, then laser everything we will discuss in nutshell quickly as a question based not as a powerpoint presentation based uh, so that we will get some information uh, before i uh, go to the program i introduce uh, sveen lamhe today dr uh, dr sveen lamhe uh, dr ravindra sabnis dr prashant patnaik dr sanjay kadgi and after the introduction i will start the program so to start with uh, uh, this is the 100th pure program i am happy that uh, successfully we could do it uh, without any problem all of them are transmitted through the youtube link this is the today's program uh, different uh, part uh, the pcn related instruments and technique we will discuss professor sveen lame is main field is minimally invasive therapy uh, particularly endourology he is german professor he introduced the mini pcnl technique in adults and presented the first specially designed nephroscope for mini pcnl in fact when i was going through the cost uh, through the manual of the wolf i came to know that on his name first mini nephroscope in 1999 was released still it is on his name uh, that is great somebody who invented the instrument and after that for decades it is used uh, most popularly for mid medium sized stones today the mini pcl technique is the treatment of choice in percutaneous stone removal he is also strongly involved in flexible ureterorhinoscopy and the development of new disposables in endourology that shows his uh, passion for uh, uh, finding out the new things in endourology with his uh, uh, with his experience a few years ago the smallest tipless basket on the market 1.2 french has been introduced Uh, i didn't know that better uh, lesser the size it is better maneuverability in flexible ureteroscopy mini pcnl as well as flexible urs are frequently presented by live surgery at national international meetings i have seen many times his surgery is clinical cell including the ultrasound guided uh, ultrasound guided uh, pcnl dr ravindra sabni sir we all know he is the elect president usi and chairman and hod urology department mpuh nadiad he has various positions he really served the society of uh, urology society of india as honorary secretary chairman board of education that time it was the name uh, given by him and uh, it is the uh, product of sabni sir's brain usa president west zone honorary secretary west zone council member uh, board of education usa council member usa treasurer council member and examiner it needs lot of patience and uh, orientation to serve the society he is reviewer also for i can't read all the journals maybe all important journals he is the reviewer more than 200 presentations more than 50 guest lectures and at faculty in many places in fact in my hospital itself three times he conducted mini perk and demonstrated nicely published many international articles and written book chapters demonstrated live surgeries international national more than that he encourages many of the juniors uh, irrespective of their uh, the uh, junior status he encourages a lot Uh, dr sanjay kadgi sir who is uh, uh, i have learned from him and who is very well known uh, urologist from the nepal and he is from suvechi international hospital research center he, he trained his endo urology from ganjo china from professor uh, jung guo hua who is a pioneer of mini pcnl in the world created with introducing mini pcnl in his 
country and also laser treatment for prostate in his country in 2010. He has more than 3,800 uh, renal stones. He is remembered for PCNL across the world for his number. Uh, daily he used to do 10 cases like that, 180 plus prostates. He also conducted various conferences. Actually, there was a, uh, a conference to be conducted this year, international conference. Probably because of Corona next year it is posted. We like to see his skill in the conference. He has conducted various Euro camps and he presented various posters. Dr. Pashant Patnaik sir, a well known teacher in Mumbai. To be honest, very simple person, very approachable to the Mumbai urologist. And uh, uh, he, he, he has done uh, ESWL and uh, endo urology after he finished the training in Cyan Hospital. In Mumbai, he, he was a freelancer. He was an institu institutional uh, consultant and, and uh, he has vast experience in uh, PCNL. So, uh, done many many things high tech in Indo urology, particularly in Mumbai. He is well known prominent uh, urologist. So, I am fortunate uh, uh, to uh, to have this. So, today, uh, before I uh, see show some presentations, we will start the case. We imagine uh, like we are starting a case of PCNL. So, one one instrument we will discuss with the, all of them. So, good evening, one and all. First, I wanted to ask Phil Lam here. Sir, do you use ureteric catheter before doing PCNL? If so, what size? I, reg I regularly use uh, ureteral catheter um, before PCNL approach because in my opinion, the insertion of a ureteral catheter facilitates the puncture of the kidney. And at the puncture of the calicial system is the main step in a successful PCNL this is a very important step. What size you, you use, sir? I'm using a five French ureteral catheter. This is a special catheter with a balloon at the tip. The balloon is inflated above the uteral pelvic junction. And this allows not only to dilate the calicis system, it also prevents small stone fragments um, by migration to the ureter. Five French catheter with a balloon at the tip. Sabni, sir, I have seen you using ureteric catheter with multiple holes. You claim that the stones can be uh, easily uh, delivered out, even even prone PCNL also. You use routinely with size and with multiple holes or not? Is it available in India? Is it extra cost? I came to know that it is around 250 rupees. Very cost effective. Do you use routinely with multiple holes or direct one? Yeah, so especially when we are using the micro perk, there the problem is of uh, the uh, the water doesn't come out, unlike the mini PCNL or even the MIPXS. These are all open system. Micro perk is a closed system, and you really depend on the intra pressure, intra inner pressures to be uh, kept low only by the uh, evacuation of uh, saline by the ureteric catheter. And with a single-ended, uh, open-ended catheter, what happens is that the powder which is formed sometimes gets blocked. And therefore, in a micro perk, uh, we routinely use uh, multiple hole catheter. Okay. Otherwise, in every case, we use uh, open-ended single catheter, not the balloon, the regular ureteric catheter. Is the balloon catheter available in India, sir, just for the information? I, I, I don't I, know. I have not seen... It is not available because uh, nobody uses it because of the, uh, of the cost. And cost. it is really not required. What? The other thing is that um, I won't repeat what uh, Dr. Lame has uh, said, but in a situation where there is a big upper ureteric stone impacted and uh, dilated system, often uh, we do not put any ureteric catheter. We just go anti-grade uh, puncture, ultrasound guided, and then uh, remove the stone and put up a digested anti-grade uh, manner. Yes, sir. The situation of ureteric catheter. Yes, sir. Sanjay, sir, if the ureteric catheter is pushed up to the above the stone, and suddenly after turning pro, uh, prone by the by the junior, if the ureteric catheter comes out below the ureter, uh, can we do anything for this? Do you like to put a guide wire along with it so that you can have stability or you, you will uh, inject forcibly from the mid ureter? It commonly happens or you tie tightly so that it will not come out. Now in, in our mini PCNL technique, I usually prefer to keep ureteric catheter just below the stone okay because when we remove the stone uh, after the fragmentation retrograde saline push is done and from above anti we give the saline push 
so that stone evacuation is much faster when you keep the ureteric catheter below the stone. Okay. If you keep this ureteric catheter above the stone, that will not facilitate the stone evacuation much faster. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, Prashant, sir, uh, when, you, when, you, when you do in prone PCNL ureteric catheter, do you inject contrast in prone or do you inject after putting into the supine position? Uh, I mean, uh, do, you, do you inject contrast before changing the position or you will not inject? Because things may change. The view of the uh, uh, CM camera uh, will be changed uh, after changing the position. So is it better to inject contrast uh, uh, or after prone position it, it better to inject? See, after giving prone position it is always better because then you have got an orientation and also you know which calyx to puncture. Because when you inject the dye before, then it might obscure your uh, thought process. Okay. So it is always better to inject afterwards. Sir, Swil Lame, sir, whenever you decide about the puncture, you have positioned in prone. Now uh, we, we, we close about the ureteric catheter. Most of the times we use 250 rupees in Indian made five French ureteric catheter just below the stone, tie it up and put in prone position. You inject contrast. The first thing what you look in the system. Uh, to decide what is your normal, whether you do bullseye or triangle radiation and which needle you use? Uh, I, I only perform ultrasound guided puncture. You don't do C-arm guided puncture at all, sir? I, I don't use a C-arm. I have a special X-ray table. This provides an excellent X-ray imaging. And what I, what I do is I... Um, I I perform an ultrasound guided puncture of the lower calyx. I don't need a C arm and I don't use a bull eyes technique or something like that. If you want to see how I am doing this, I have prepared a small video and can show it to you if you like. Ah, oh, sir, uh, we will see uh, at the end, sir. What is okay. the ultrasound mission you are using, sir? I have a special ultrasound probe which allows to push the needle through the ultrasound probe. And after a certain dilation of the calicial system, the calyx can be clearly seen and you can exactly um, navigate to the calicial system. No problem. Okay. Sir, Sabni, sir, I have seen you doing both the CM and ultrasound, but I think that you always attempt first CM. Uh, what CM in your uh, hospital, Nadiad, you routinely use? Which CM company? Sorry, there are no conflicts of interest just for the matter yeah. of information. So we have a we have a Siam made by Medico. This was by Kanti Gada, and uh, this Siam is the one which is very useful for us. It has extremely low maintenance, and it goes it is, on for it years. Is from, it is from local Nadiad or Ahmedabad. No, it is Ahmedabad made, but it is available all over India. It is. What is the name, sir? What is Medico, the name? Medico. 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 Course, Normal Siam will cost now around twelve lakhs. It will be in the same region. Yeah, it is uh, probably less than that. Less than that. Uh, so you you decide first. Uh, uh, normally we see that you do it in a single plane, assess the kidney depending right. on the size, and you go posterior calyx. Uh, I have less often seen you uh, doing in two angles, but I feel you follow triangle radiation single plane, and right. if it is not coming, then only you go in thirty degree. Correct. Then, Correct. Uh, Kadgi, sir, what, what is your? What happens is that <coughs> when you inject, suppose if you want to do under fluoroscopic control. When you inject contrast, you have the calyces which are visualized. Now you know which is a posterior calyx, which is the end on shadow in the AP view. And more or less, you know that how much by, by judgment and by experience, you know how much angle you have to give. Yes, and sir. you get that feel in, yes, the, in a single fluoro. If you are a little bit away, you can go little uh, anterior, little posterior, and you don't have to waste time in rotating that. But of course, that's not an ego issue. You can always. Yes. Okay. Katki, sir, honestly tell me, sir, where. Bullseye technique is definitely needed. Uh, triangle radiation, a lot of people do. Some people say that bullseye is 100% accurate, but the angle with which you enter the kidney is slightly acute. So, uh, what what is your uh, traditional method of doing the and which needle you use? Kadgi, sir. Yes. Chandramon. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead. So I prefer to use C arm guided puncture. That's a, not bullseye. That's a gradual descent uh, technique. Yeah. If, as Dr. Sabnis already said, 
if I do not get in one plane, only then I rotate the CM X-ray. Otherwise, about 90% of the cases we can achieve in single plane too. If okay. I cannot get in initial puncture, I change first initially, make a lesser angle puncture. If not, I can change again, the, uh, make a deeper angle. Yes, sir. If More change in three angles, most of the time you can get it. Yes, sir. sir. Prashant, sir, when you see a peripheral stone with a central stone, if the contrast is not going into the system, we, you don't mind hitting the stone directly? Yes. Yes, I don't mind hitting the stone directly. I just hit the stone and then subsequently inject some contrast through that and then I just uh, do my uh, uh, dilatation. Uh, uh, all of you uses, uh, we all use Cook 18 gauge needle. Any any yes. any difference, please let us know, sir. Swin Lame, sir. Do you use first okay. needle, uh, 18 gauge cook needle only? Yes. Uh, yes. Anybody wants to comment on the coral starch three three pro, three uh, model needle? Very less people use. Uh, any any advantage of that that you have to thread the second needle? It looks uh, difficult oh, to. I put will I will tell you. Needle. I will tell you. Initially, when we were uh, students and when we were learning, sir, it was a time where this uh, sort of a three part chiba needle was very common. Yes, sir. And I remember Dr. Chibber and many other people used to always make point that it's a Chiba needle because it was thought at that time that 18 gauge needle will cause a lot of trauma to kidney and it will have a lot of uh, problem if you make multiple attempts. Yes, yes, sir. And the distal portion of the Chiba needle is just a 21 uh, gauge needle. Water may not come through that. Over a period of time, we have realized that actually that is not required. The damage caused by the by the 18 gauge needle, even if you make multiple attempts is not much, not significant and completely insignificant. And therefore, more or less from everywhere, people have given up using the, uh, the three-part Chiba needle, except Dr. S. K. Pal, who still continues to practice that old uh, uh, this. Yeah, yes, uh, sir. Sir, sir Sabni, sir, people are asking the name of that uh, CM company. Can you mention? It's a, it's a Medico, it's a Medico for Surgical uh, CM. That Siam, I'll tell you the little story, just one minute. That, huh. that Siam was extremely popular, very versatile, very low maintenance. And then subsequently it was manufactured by Kanti Gada, who is based in Ahmedabad. It was so popular that the Philips actually purchased that company, taking, uh, thinking that they will uh, manufacture and supply, but that actually was a completely wrong thing. Philips purchased that company uh, with a lot of financial benefits to them, but eventually they killed that Siam, that killed that everything, that manufacturing was tough. And Philips uh, continued to manufacture their own version, their own Siam. And over a period of time, that thing was uh, completely disappeared. Is it, now, is it, what is available people, now, sir? Same people, people now are available. They have come out with the uh, same technology, a group of people who were associated with them. And that is now Surgico. That name is Surgico. Surgico. No. Yes, sir. I will I will put all details in oh, that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir. 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 Chandra, uh, yes, sir. Chandra Mohan, just uh, to add to Sabni's uh, what he said, uh, there is a little nostalgic thing which I want to mention. I'll take only one minute. Sir. So this, uh, you know, we I used to use the Siemens uh, one at uh, RG Stone when I started. Sir. So then what happened? This Kanti Gada was an engineer in Siemens. He left and he started a prototype which was first used by me in the interior of Maharashtra. Okay. And then, then the story began. And he sold at the cheap, uh, so less price that you can't imagine, around five to six lakhs used to sell the machine. Yeah. That one installment basis. So all my colleagues and uh, friends and juniors, they started taking and that's why it got popularized. Actually, Serimo, Serimobile C, uh, Philips, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have used for a long time. It is right. so good. The yeah. time, time lag is very less. Right. Now, I have taken Allenger. We will come yes. to that point, sir. Right, right, right. Uh, sir, Sweet Lame, sir, after a successful puncture, ultrasound, I mean to say that you will always puncture the posterior calyx. Yes. Am I correct that you will always puncture the posterior calyx? Yes, you are right. Yeah. In that case, what guide wire? In, for example, three clinical situations I want to ask you. There is a Terumo guide wire. There is a J-tip guide wire. There is a Zebra guide wire. In in uh, in case of a, a free system, whatever the guide wire, it doesn't matter. But in case of a stone which is snugly fitting, 
with water coming out uh, with little manipulation initial guide wire what is your choice if there is any difficulty to pass the stone by the guide wire i always use a high use a hydrophilic guide wire terumo guide wire or something like that and after i have passed the stone with the hydrophilic guide wire i insert a small catheter in order to change the guide wire because okay the best the best guide wire to perform the dilation is a simple stainless steel guide wire with a j tip this is my okay. main guide wire okay i got the point so you will change you don't uh, uh, what what is that size of the uh, ure catheter uh, 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 which you pass uh, over that guide wire first catheter what is the size 6 french or 8 french yes it's 6 or 8 french it depends on the situation depends on the system so uh, uh, quickly uh, these guide wires actually j tip guide wire ptfe is around 500 rupees in india termo guide wire is 1100 rupees in india and uh, the i came to know that uh, the sensor guide wire is uh, 800 rupees uh, so quickly i wanted to ask sabni sir what is your favorite guide because the termo slips uh, whenever a difficult puncture yeah. suddenly if slips uh, we feel very bad again yeah. doing such puncture may not be possible any comment on that sir sabni sir yeah, what you are saying is absolutely true termo a new first time use uh, guide wire glide wire termo is very slippery and yes. unless you are very very careful it will slip out yes, but um, uh, as uh, dr lame pointed out uh, what he saying is what is idealistic situation but um, in a situation in our country where we are really very cost uh, uh, conscious yes, yes. And, uh, we have learned all our residents and everybody of us have learned how to use the glide wire itself Uh, for the uh, whole process so we puncture dilate do everything on that and then uh, once you are inside we take out the glide wire another tip is that uh, we of course reuse the uh, glide wire which is all over india everybody does it if you use new glide wire there are all chances of it being slippery and coming out but if you start reusing it that glide wire loses that slipperiness <laughs> and that actually is the benefit So if the resident is doing, he should not be using the new glide wire. New is really simple. Uh, so that uh, hydrophilic uh, property of uh, not damaging and going into that remains, but uh, that extreme slipperiness disappears, and yeah. that actually is a little bit beneficial. Kadhi sir, your guide wire choice. Anything on PTFE you want to comment? It looks rough, and only thing is that doesn't go easily to uh, the spaces. Uh, what is your choice, sir? Sir Mohan, I Sir. have brought the guide wires. Both yeah, very good wires. So I, I I prefer this zebra guide wires. Yeah, okay. Why zebra guide wires? It glides very easily on facial dilators. Okay. I prefer to use facial dilators. Yeah. But if you use PTF guide wire, as you can see here, if there is a kink after yes. insertion insertion of a guide wire, I cannot. pass this facial dilators yeah i have to redo it i have to repuncture it yeah that's why i prefer to use zebra guide wire in okay. uh, facial dilators okay so i hardly use uh, uh, these uh, thermo yeah. guide wires okay. as already mentioned it is very slippery if it does not go into the ureter it may slips out from the system very easily Uh, sir uh, prashant sir do you put two guide wires or only one guide wire and uh, second thing is that to avoid the for example by chance if you have a kink at the beginning a tractor sheath if you have too much coil of the guide wire in the pcs you can pull out that kink and uh, keep it outside so how much guide wire as much as possible you push inside or you keep a second guide wire what is your comment on that uh, i never use second guide wire Okay. So with with one guide wire, as you said rightly, if it is say there is a kink, I just pull it and then pass yeah. a smaller yeah. size uh, dilator yeah. so that you know it can accommodate that uh, the whatever kink is there and then replace it with a regular wire. As okay. far as this terimo is concerned, there are yeah. two two types of terimo available. One is yeah. uh, a soft and one is little uh, stiff. Stiff. Sti stiff one should be used in PCM. And yeah. the color color code is there the blue and white you know so that. for all the juniors we, we we have conclusion that the normal ptfe is cheaper but uh, people are not using it better to use the either most of the times termo is used termo is the company where other uh, the entire india it is available around 1100 to 900 rupees zebra guide wire is also good which is uh, 0.038 is around 800 rupees 
Sven Lame, sir. Uh, uh, one second. After... Chandram, just yeah. one point. Uh, zebra wire, I think, is uh, costlier than the... Uh, sir, the... I came to know in the evening, uh, morning only when I was inquiring. Termo has recently increased the cost uh, from yeah. 700 to 1100. Uh, uh, and uh, the actually previously the hydrophilic uh, wire was not available and uh, therefore when we were learning uh, PCNL, yes, that sir. time it was only J-tip. The problem of uh, PTFE J-tip wire is that uh, the kink as Kadgi pointed yeah. out. Somehow PTFE is, uh, PTF is less. Your puncture would go west and uh, even if you have to change it, then you end up in using two, three uh, wires in single case which is not cost viable. And sir. therefore, after uh, the hydrophilic wire came in, uh, yeah. the things have completely changed. And now Terimo has increased, but now there are a lot of Indian companies which have introduced the hydrophilic uh, uh, guide wires, uh, similar to the property of uh, Terimo, yes. Unim and Biorad. Uh, there's so many uh, Indian companies now are making this hydrophilic. Uh, around, around 800 to 1000. They are about 800, 900 rupees. Green yes. Lamb is an important question. Uh, when we do puncture, we feel very happy after passing the guide wire and parking it. We don't want to lose anything afterwards because we feel good. The first dilator, there are various means. In a rectus sheath, very good, healthy male patient, it is a problem. In a female obese patient, smoothly it goes. In a male patient, when you are using the C arm and pushing it, various types of dilators are there. Sequential 6 French, uh, initial dilators everybody uses 6, 8, 10. But the problem is they cannot perforate easily the rectus sheath. They, they are smooth conical, not sharp. And the, the PCNL rod, Alken rod is too, uh, too blunt. Uh, the, the coral starge uh, steel rod sometimes look stiff. Uh, this ultra mini pair coral starge rod. So, in difficult case where it is precious to dilate in the first 6 to 8 French, 9 French, 10 French, what is your choice in a difficult case? Um, this is a difficult question, but I have an easy answer. I always do a single step dilation. Sir. Single, step di single step dilation means I'm always using the same stainless steel dilator. Oh. The diameter of this stainless steel dilator is 15 French. I don't do a subsequent dilation with, an, uh, uh, with bigger uh, dilators. I only have one dilator. And now I'm coming to the main point. The main point is the tip of the dilator. And there is a significant difference between the Stort system and the Richard Wolf system. The Richard Wolf system has a sharper tip of the dilator. And believe me, in nine of 10 cases, it's no problem to perform a one-step dilation with this particular stainless steel dilator. Okay. This is very cheap, okay. it is reusable, and no problem. In okay. the few cases, for example, if patients are pre-operated, very large scars or something like that, yes. I'm using plastic dilators step by step, six, eight, 10 French. But this th this is used, I think, five times a year, that's all. Okay, always, so this Wolf, uh, Wolf dilator is freely available. Uh, this is a standard uh, steel that we haven't heard, actually, I haven't heard, sorry. Uh, the, the, the This is a, a little bit of sharp at the edge and slowly tapered uh, edge. Yes, this special dilator is specially designed to perform mini PCNL. Okay. This dilator exactly fits to the stainless steel amplet sheath okay. and it is de developed, delivered with a set of mini nephroscope of Richard Wolf. That's all. Okay. If, you have a, if you have a look at the Carl Storz dilators, they yeah. have the same diameter. This is right. Yeah. But the tip is completely different and it is not sharp enough from my point of view. Uh, got the point, sir. Sir, Sabni, sir, routinely in your theater, uh, you don't have any conference, you are not demonstrating, you are alone. What is the one which you prefer? Standard mini per car, uh, a little bigger size, no problem. Initial dilatation. See, no, initial, I only perform the mini dilatation is always now one step, whether you are using conventional or mini PCNL. Yeah. But the dilatation, what we do, we don't use rod or anything now, that is all given up. We Once we put a puncture, hmm. we have a screw dilator. 
which is the tip is six French and shaft is 14 French and a sharper uh, tip with a screw in a screw like manner. So that we put it in almost every case of mini PCNL. You have a smaller uh, size screw dilators also. So if you are doing MIP excess, where you are using only 11 French or even yeah. nine French, you have a smaller screw dilators available. So okay. you first dilate with the screw dilator and then you put a dilator. Now, as Lame pointed out, I completely agree with him that if you start putting the stores dilator just after puncturing, it will never go because yeah, it, it, is it, will it will be difficult. And in fact, it will, it will cause a lot of problem and the wire, everything will come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wolf uh, has a very sharp pointed conical tip. We have that dilator. But the problem, I think, I don't know I'm right or not, but the wolf doesn't have the nephroscope sheet like what uh, stores has. You have to use the M-plats. And therefore, you dilate with the uh, whatever size dilator you want to pass with the wolf dilator. Over that, you thread whatever size m which fits into that, and then remove the dilator. So that is what is the wolf system. Unlike okay. stores, which comes with this with its own dilator and its own sheath. That we is can, buy, we, we can buy this dilator separately also? Yes, uh, yes. yes. yes it is available in different yes. sizes, yes. and yes. they are available separately. Sweet, sir. Yes. May, may I give you a short correction? This is not right because Richard Wolf also sells a set. This is a special dilator, a special unplugged sheath, and the mini nephroscope. That's all. It's completely the same as Karl Storz. You all know, only have to ask for the single step dilator and the particular amplet sheath. And it fits exactly. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But 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 if we are talking about the tip of the dilator. There's another uh, aspect we should discuss because the sharper the tip of the dilator is, the more dangerous the dilation process is. And you need a little more space in the renal uh, pelvis because if you have a sharper tip of the dilator, uh, the, the conus of the dilator is longer. If you compare it to the Storz, it is very short. You don't need so much space in the renal pelvis, but it's not sharp enough. Therefore, yeah. if you are using a sharper single step dilator, be aware that you do not do a perforation of the medial wall of the renal pelvis. That's all. Okay. Right, sir. Kadgi, sir. Comment, sir. I have been using, doing mini piscine for 16 years. From day one, I have been using this facial dilators. I'm happy that you are Once doing... we insert the guide, the Zebra guide, but first I insert eight, eight or 10 French. Okay. That will fa facilitate this the looks like French cook. insertion. This looks like cook uh, dilator. No, no. It's not, no, it's from China. Okay. And that will facilitate the advancement of the 18 French sheet. These are the facial dilators I use from, uh, these are from China. This okay. is not as soft as you get in uh, India. This yeah. is somewhat stiffer and it has a very fine tip, okay. which is very less traumatic. Okay. So that's and my routine practice. It is available in Nepal? Or you have to get it from uh, the family? easily available in Nepal and also I get from China. Okay. Sir, Prashant, sir, what dilator, in what dilator initially you use? Uh, I use I use a one-step dilator, as Submit said, the screw dilator, or maybe a 10 French dilator to start with, and then pass, uh, if I want to do metal dilatation with alkane, or uh, if, there are one more thing I want to mention is that, you know, we have plastic uh, M-plus available uh, with a side channel, clear petra. So yeah. ever since I, I just, I am very happy with that, even in on one, uh, that uh, dilator, I can pass this thing instead of metal. So I can easily go through it without any trauma. That's one. The second thing in when the parenchyma is thin or the cortex is very thin, you do anything, but you cannot uh, dilate. So in that case, I always keep a balloon and balloons are available very cheaply today with BioRed and with the blue name, they're almost available at two, two, uh, four, 5,000 rupees. Is balloon balloon uh, of the nephrostomy tract you, you you mean to say yes oh that we didn't know that's a good point yeah. sir i am un unhappy that uh, all of you are selling single step dilatation 
uh, are you are you con senior consultants are not using alkene dilators at all we are using no elk no elk in the later you are also not using alkene dilator almost almost given up oh my god we are we are no. using regularly because the back of the alkene dilator is very sharp uh, central one it goes nicely in a uh, i mean it perforates the rectus sheath properly i was thinking See, uh, we are, we are know, nowadays the maximum track which uses 24 french yeah. and yeah. if you dilate it up to by screw dilator by 14 put a rod and on the rod if you put a 14 french amplage dilator and sheath it will go a little bit of force and it goes so all that uh, multiple steps are avoided and the dilatation becomes very fast yeah, me, sir same thing you wanted same you also don't do alkene dilatation no uh, professor alkene worked approximately 40 kilometers away from my department because i know him very well he's living next to my department but believe me alkene dilators are history they are related to standard pcnl and as we don't do any standard pcnl anymore we don't need alkene dilators, only single step dilators. Okay, now, now the next uh, uh, important step comes. See, we are talking about more concerned about mini perk. I am saying that if the stone is more than 2 cm, if the stone is more than 2 to around 2 to 3 cm, quickly I wanted to know, uh, irrespective of any position, it is a straightforward case. Uh, the, what amplash size, not the nephroscope I am asking, amplash size you will select 15, 18, 12. Lame, sir. I am always using the same mini nephroscope and the same amplash size. Which the size? Inner cross, the, inner cross, the inner cross section of the amplash sheath is 15 French. Outer, outer size 18 French. Always the same amplash size. Almost all cases of your. Uh... Yes. I also even, use this in even, even if it is tag arm, even if it is tag yes. arm. Yes, yes. Okay. Sir, Sabni, sir. If you are using mini PCNL, we generally use that 15.5 star sheet. 15.5 inch star sheet. That, that, sheet. Is steel, that is steel sheet outer. Yeah, yeah. You don't use the Kuka Ampla sheet. No, for mini PCNL, we generally use the uh, steel um, Carl Star sheet. With coral star sheath, it comes around 4 lakhs uh, with, uh, with outer sheath. It is 12 French by 15.5. What do you mean to say? What sheath? Uh, sheath is 15.5, scope is 12. Yes, correct. Yes, sir. Adgi, sir. Yes. See, 99% of my work is mini perk with okay. the 18 French sheet. This 18 is uh, again from China. China. Yeah, again from China. And if I have a stag on stone, I prefer to use 20 French sheet. That's the inner diameter. And outer is, that's 22 French. What are the so two arrow mark at the end, sir? We are seeing uh, two arrows at the end. You can see this. What I do, once I, uh, I did a dilatation, and we keep the inner end at the level of PUJ. Once it is placed, then we just peel it away so that the track is so short and then stone evacuation is much short, much faster. So the main aim is to make a shorter track to evacuate the stone much faster. Okay. So as we don't use forceps and all, we irrigate these stones by means of retrograde saline and the irrigation pump. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, Prashant, sir, you, you use what sheath and what... Uh... What uh, outer sheath, inner sheath, I mean, uh, depending on the stone. I, I'm asking slightly larger stone. Smaller stone, it doesn't make difference. Okay. Uh, as Sabni said, I use uh, the same, uh, either wolf or the stores one, uh, the, the sheath. Uh, or many times I use the plastic sheaths with side channel. Uh, I want to ask all of you then, then the usually if you use a steel sheath along with the, uh, the, the scope uh, intact versus ampla sheath which a cut end by cook uh, the stone movement in a uh, exactly beveled one versus a ampla sheath which is angulated stones will come out easily and rotation of the ampla sheath according to the uh, according to the calyx and the infant diploma is better with ampla sheath uh, do you think if steel sheath is used along with the company nephroscope is it a disadvantage especially 
the steel is very thick so uh, chandra, chandra with uh, this thing uh, it's it's not that uh, difficult because today we are using low pressure suction and with the with the low pressure suction doesn't matter whether it's beveled or whether it's steel lamme sir are you using ampla sheets at all uh, i only use i only use stainless steel ampla sheet and the stainless steel is a material which is the strongest material which means that the thickness of the wall of the ampla sheet is much thinner than in plastic sheets of course in former times which is 20 years ago i used the cook ampla sheet yeah. but from my from my current point of view you don't need this believe me there are no disadvantages you can really only use a stainless steel and you have it for years you have it for decades because yeah. nothing happens it is reusable and it's almost impossible to alter this ampla sheet it works yeah. very well okay sabni so, sir you also agree with that my, yeah i agree with you uh, i agree with dr lame that we use a steel ampla sheet my understanding of the vacuum cleaner effect is uh, is that if it is a transverse cut not the beveled one the vacuum cleaner effect by the law of physics it's ultimately yes. a physics yes. how the current flows and how the yeah. vacuum flows yeah. is it is uh, much better with the uh, transverse cut rather than the beveled uh, end and therefore the nephroscopes which are been manufactured with the understanding that vacuum cleaner effect comes in they are all uh, transverse cut it is not the beveled tip of the uh, sheets which are been manufactured So yeah, this yeah. is my understanding that return of the stones is far better. Yeah, yeah, sir, Katki sir, uh, you have already shown that you are using one sheet uh, which is again beveled. Uh, so it's not like yeah. a cook uh, sheet. It's a transverse cut. It's transverse cut. Transverse cut. Uh, Prashant yeah. sir, what do you say, sir? I fully agree with Sabnis and uh, with the whirlpool effect, and also I use a low power suction. So I don't uh, think this beveled has got any advantage. Yeah. sir now i will share the all the nephroscopes available in india after that i will ask the question i kept a three three scopes from the wolf olympus in india olympus active wolf olympus and uh, this thing after that we will see which scope you will choose M most of you are using maybe one or two scopes but just quick because lot of uh, juniors were asking uh, we will share quickly the uh, the um, uh, scopes only what i mean to say scopes only uh, these are the scopes uh, nephroscopes available this is the miniature nephroscope by lamhe sir we all should appreciate that the today speaker has invented this when i was going through the uh, book it is in, it is uh, invented by Lam lamhe sir original it is 15 by 18 outer sheet 18 and 15 it costs around 2.8 lakhs and uh, the three french ultra mini nephroscope i have not heard of it then we will discuss these are the two nephroscopes which are present with the wolf uh, this is a 15 by 18 mini nephroscope 12 degree angle we also discuss what is advantage of degrees but six french channel it's a big channel laterally offset ips this around 2.8 lakhs again all the wolf nephroscope with outer outer sheet are 1 lakh less than uh, coral star but we will see how how they are effective this is dredson i think 20.8 12 degree pa parallel ips which is a well known 12 14 french working channel uh, amazing channel uh, 14 french now coming to the 24 french nephroscope 0 degree it is parallel ips 3.5 mm working channel next is 27 french extra long nephroscope which has 4 mm these are the four i repeat 15 uh, the uh, wolf nephroscope uh, 15 by 18 next is uh, 20.8 next 24 next 27 star nephroscopes are very famous in 7.5 because it is the smallest uh, uh, if i am not wrong mip xs very very famous for uh, small stones and laser then is the 12 french which is most commonly used with 6.5 french uh, working channel which cost around 4 lakhs all of them cost around 4 lakhs 19.5 french 12 degree angle uh, this is also very commonly used competition to uh, the dredson uh, 26 french scope which we used to use 10 years back when large stones 
but I think these uh, are 66 degrees and 14 French. This is the long, largest uh, channel size where you can put a triprong, uh, uh, 5 French, 6 French and take out the large stones. Olympus has uh, only two scopes, uh, 7.5 French working channel, 15 French scope and high flow 30 degree angle 4 mm diameter. They are also claiming around 4 lakhs. So with this I will go back to the speakers and ask uh, uh, which at least you have to mention two scopes for different stone scenarios. Uh, Finn Lame sir, what is your comment on 7.5 French uh, mini uh, uh, MIP coral starch? You might have used this. Yes, but um, let us talk about the diameter of the scope. Yes, sir. If, you're, if you are using a holmium laser for lithotripsy, okay, sir. The, 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 the nephroscope has only two functions. The first function is to have a good view and the second function is to apply the laser. That's all. And this means that you should have the smallest scopes, um, which makes it possible to have these two functions. Therefore, it is absolutely uh, no benefit to have larger nephroscope or something like that. The main thing is the diameter of the amplitude sheet. You showed the Richard Wolf nephroscope, but remember the, nef the mini nephroscope has only 12 French. The diameter which was mentioned was a diameter of the amplitude sheet. And okay. what we should have is a small or limited diameter of the amplitude sheet and a very, very small nephroscope diameter in order to have a good space for the so-called vacuum cleaner effect. Okay. And, and, and uh, this is, uh, from my point of view, it is a, a, a misunderstanding of Karl Stotz because they have, I think, four or five different uh, nephroscopes and this That's is not necessary. We only need a nephroscope to have a view, yeah. to apply the laser and have a working channel. That's all. And it is not needed to have a larger nephroscope because we should have a large space between nephroscope and amplitude sheet. This is right. Therefore, my recommendation is to have a limited diameter of the amplitude sheets, 18 French, for example, and then to look for the smallest nephroscope available, independent okay. from, the from the company. Okay, okay. Uh, do, do, do you prefer a 5 to 6 degrees or 30 degree? Zero degree is not useful, I feel. No, zero degree does not make any sense. Any sense? Because, because if you turn the instrument around with zero degree, you do not have a different view. Yes, sir. Therefore, therefore a certain angle is recommended, for example, 12 or 12 15 degree. degrees. Okay. And if you turn around the nephroscope, you can have a look into the calices. Yeah, 30 yeah. degrees, from my point of view, is too much. Uh, too much. Too much. Yeah. Okay, Sabni, sir. Your scope and two scopes you mentioned, smallest stones. I have seen you operating MIP. Uh, I have seen you operating Dredson. Uh, in general, you use what scope? So for my for small stones in a pediatric PCNL and in a very compact system and a very small stone, I would prefer uh, MIP Excess Stars 7.5. It's a fantastic scope which they have yeah. manufactured. Very good. And with the with 11 French uh, outer diameter size, 9 by 11. Uh, that is my preferable for that that kind of a stone. Second choice is the mini PCNL, which is standard. Uh, majority of the stones are now with mini PCNL, Sorry. where we use the sheet and the 12 French nephroscope. There you have wider choice. You have a Castors, you have uh, uh, Wolf, Wolf, and you have uh, your Olympus. The Olympus is not that popular. The yeah. choice remains between Stars and Wolf. Yeah. Wolf actually design wise, channel size wise, everything is fine, but still we are using stars simply because the, the, uh, the distribution and the, uh, there are a lot of logistic problems in buying okay. a Wolf instrument. Yes. There are a lot of fake uh, instruments which have come up. There are refurbished items which have been published, which yeah. have been, um, uh, sorry, supplied. And therefore the Wolf has, uh, has got a very bad name in our country. Yes, simply sir. because of this this problem but yes. we have wolf we have stars and if you see design wise and the size wise the wolf is better much better than the even uh, than less the costly also sir one lakh yeah, less the yeah. difference and the biggest difference is that now we use shock pulse for the stagon and a bigger stone i feel there is a lot of uh, benefit of using shock pulse or the trilogy 
and these 1.9 mm probe will not go in stars uh, yeah. mini 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 park uh, uh, 12 frames uh, okay. size Size wolf print looks a small, sir. Slender, very but, small. But that twelve French size wolf will accommodate your uh, uh, trilogy or shock pulse, okay. and therefore, when we have to use the shock pulse for mini PCNL, either we have to go for the Olympus or we have to go for the uh, for the wolf stars. We can't use. So that and is. If I remember PCNL. correctly, stars does not give ampla sheath outer with twelve French. They give. Yeah, no, it yeah. is a 15 uh, French uh, 18, size. 17 and 19. Yes. But it won't snugly fit into this. Na, like no, no, that is not a problem at all. That French is not a problem. French, there is no problem. For If you want to go for higher up, the standard PCNL, if you have to do, generally now we don't do that 24 uh, thing is completely gone. But if you have to use for higher uh, size nephroscope, Dresden is the best uh, nephroscope, which is as of today I have ever seen. Yeah, now, yes. no other no other nephroscope has such design like the Dresden nephroscope. Yes, sir. Previous nephroscopes of stars had very poor design, and now they have more or less copied the Wolf design, which is integrated uh, nephroscope, meaning thereby nephroscope itself can be a separate unit. You don't have to buy that separate uh, Seat. uh, sheets which are provided by by the by the company. You can yeah. use with the with the Amplats uh, sheet. sheet. No problem, sir. Lambert, sir, you are mentioning oh, yes, Dresden. Is that it has got? You can use all adult instruments. Your adult forceps, your large size um, uh, ampla, uh, this uh, uh, shock pulse, everything can be used of adult size. But still, the nephroscope size is much smaller. So strictly speaking, you can use in the 22 French amplats and do a complete uh, big, complete big stagon stone ah, ah. as good as the adult uh, big size nephroscope. I, I think a junior who is joining immediately after MCH uh, because mini park small sometimes vision is a concern. Uh, Dredson is a, a good uh, choice, you mean to say. First scope, if he has to buy for everything, it should yes, be Dresden Nephroscope. Dresden Nephroscope. Sir, uh, 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 now competing to that is the MIPL, which is parallel to the uh, Dresden. The cost difference is too much. Too much. But well, looking five, at five, the distribution and looking at the problem, logistic problems in the uh, for the wolf, then the only alternative remains is the uh, MIPL. Five. MIP. Sir, Sphil Lame, sir, you are telling that the quality of the steel is slightly different. Uh, I feel Wolf has a thinner and uh, uh, the coral starch is thicker and lumen is also different. A comment on that because you have done research, you are the inventor and uh, probably you might have gone into the minor details of this. A comment on that. If you are thinking about developing a mini nephroscope, the diameter is a, a limit is a limitation to the cross section, which means if, if you want to have a 12 French instrument, the outer diameter is the absolutely limit uh, to uh, include all the working channel, the light fibers and so on and so on. Therefore, you need a material which is very durable. And this was the reason why we decided to, uh, to use stainless steel. Stainless steel means if you have a tube, it is very durable, it is very strong, and you don't lose um, uh, 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 something from the uh, cross section, and you have more space uh, to have a large working channel. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, Kadgi, sir, you, you are nephroscope of choice. See, Chandramon, it is not only the selection of the uh, telescope. You have to see what size you are making the track. That yeah. is very important. Usually in my, in my practice, um, about 90% of the cases, I prefer to do 18 French dilatation means I use most of the time 12 French mini nephroscope. Okay. That means there is a gap about 6 FR. Yes. Which will maintain the pelvic calicial system's pressure. Yeah. You don't get high pressure within the system. Okay. And there is a very low chance of pyogenous pyolymphatic backflow, which causes the sepsis. Okay. So in my regular practice, most of the time, I use 12 French mini nephroscope of any company. Any that company. doesn't matter. Right. There okay. are only not three companies, stores, Wolf and uh, or Olympus. Olympus. There are several companies. Olympus is actually 11 use, French. Uh, it's about 12 French only. Yeah. But uh, Prashant, sir, what is your choice of scope, sir? Uh, if it is a complete stagon, I would go for uh, Dresden. 
Yeah. That is the that is the best because eleven point five print channel and with uh, all uh, sock pulse probe and trilogy probe goes inside. Yes. And if I go for uh, mini, then Wolf definitely because again the smaller probe of uh, a sock pulse goes in that. Okay. So normally either I use high power laser or sock pulse either of these. Yeah. So now the next important discussion we are coming. We have finished seventy percent of discussion. We will take only ten to twelve minutes time. After that we will conclude. Maybe Swin Lamas sir wanted to show the ultrasound guided puncture. That video we will see at the end. So for the audience, uh, don't miss that. Uh, sir, now see. Uh, in a minute time uh, the the pneumatic lithotripter is the most commonly used by indian urologists if i am not wrong because it is very cost effective 60 to 70000 rupees slowly things have changed in last 10 years and laser has come especially homium laser 30 watts has come less than 20 lakhs something like that so people start using both for a flexible arthroscopy as well as nephroscope now they are saying that only laser is used for the stone and now suddenly trilogy and is also coming trilogy probe is also small so let us listen what is cost effective even i am feeling that uh, why you should replace pneumatic lithotripter let us start like that swin lamas sir uh, you said that you use laser uh, is it correct for all stones yes i am uh, using the holmium laser for all types of stones Uh, if we discuss the cost effectiveness of laser lithotripsy in comparison to pneumatic ballistic lithotripsy or ultrasound this uh, these aspects are depending on the particular reimbursement system of your country therefore it is really difficult to compare the conditions in germany or europe to the conditions in india or united states or somewhere else yes sir um but if we Uh, come back to the uh, characteristic characteristics of the different lithotripsy types the holmium laser provides the smallest probe the probe is approximately 500 micrometers which is really very very small and there is a, a big difference to the trilogy so for example therefore if you can afford the holmium laser it provides a better irrigation flow a better vacuum cleaner effect and it can really replace a uh, pneumatic lithotripsy or ultrasound um if you can afford this this is the main problem and this is depending on the particular reimbursement system of your country okay sir uh, sabni sir uh, you are recently actually you are the pioneer using trilogy system and shock pulse uh, uh, definitely they are disposable trilogy you you have to forget about it there is no point discussing today because particularly we are focusing on the juniors uh, shock pulse has come uh, slowly into the uh, now you have to tell you have used in you have uh, done workshops you have used in nadiad you have maximum experience in this pneumatic lithotripter are you using or not pneumatic lithotripter actually is now uh, fading away fading away not, not because it has suddenly become ineffective See, like how ESWL is fading away, not because ESWL has changed. ESWL has remained same. In fact, it has also become little better. But there are many other things which are better, which have come in, and therefore it has gone down. Okay. Similarly, lithoclast is same. Lithoclast has not worsened, but there are better things which are available, and therefore lithoclast has gone down. So now, what we do is that if you are doing mini PCNL, sir, then uh, our choice of preference is a laser. Okay. why because because uh, you can use the laser with the stars mini pcnl that is what is the sturdy and available here uh, secondly secondly if you use 500 micron fiber then the flow of irrigation which is going through the system is far better than the lithoclast probe which you put it yeah. in the irrigation that is the main advantage so so there is there is a big advantage here from that point of view and uh, uh, once and nowadays what has happened is that because of the um the flexible ultrasonography becoming so popular most of the people are purchasing yes. laser yes yes therefore lithoclast has uh, gradually gone down yes. now a standard pcnl or dresden or even in mini pcnl if you have to use for the bigger large bulk stone yes. then we have shock pulse which is available which scores much much uh, over over the lithoclast or a lithovax system uh, shock therefore, pulse are roughly how much is the cost 20 lakhs i think na sir uh yes it is around that 18 to 20 lakhs yes and and the big benefit 
which I find is that uh, in the shock pulse for the large staghan is that if we have reduced the operation time. In fact, we have reduced the number of stages. Most of the staghans nowadays we do in single stage, even though it is a full complete staghan, which we still keep on getting uh, that thing. And the biggest benefit is that infective stone, when you have a stones, which is like a slough, yeah, yeah, rubbery yeah. Stones, and many patients you get like that. Yeah, now yeah. their lithoclast does, just doesn't work. Uh, this uh, the laser doesn't work and you have to keep on removing that bit by bit with the forceps. Now okay. there, the shock pulse is a wonder. Wonder means it's a magic. Within, within no time, everything will get uh, sucked out and the system will become clear. So if you have to have that sort of a system or large bulk stone with mini PCNL, we use shock pulse, otherwise yeah. laser. And if you are using standard PCNL, then all standard PCNL shock pulse. Yeah. So Dr. Shabir Hussain is also is my close friend. He says that it is very effective and SFR can be really uh, better because the stone my movement and migration into the upper calyx, especially if you are going through lower calyx will be very less. And again, uh, again one more point that if you compare shock pulse and triology, triology also is far, far better. In fact, uh, their system, uh, you have four uh, power settings which you can yeah, do. Yeah. So everything yes, is feasible. But, but uh, that is disposable. Is that cost. Disposable that too. Yeah, so probes are disposable and therefore and, it uh, cannot work. In I anything. don't think in near future it can replace. Uh, but uh, but outside uh, in where they use everything, uh, use and throw, for them the trilogy is a big boon. Kadgi sir. Yes. Uh, I'm not very sure how many people are using trilogy or uh, this uh, shock pulse. Uh, in my regular practice, I'm using pneumatic lithoclast. And in certain cases, when there is a thin renal parenchyma and hard stone, in such cases, I prefer to use lasers. And we fragment, we are not dusting all the stones, we fragment them around 3 to 4 mm of size, then we evacuate these stones. So, in my personal opinion, when you use trilogy, it's a, a handle is too heavy, what i seen and uh, came to know about the trilogy, but where we perform about five to six cases every day, trilogy may be too much expensive for our people. That's yes. my personal personal experience. That's why I prefer uh, to use simple uh, pneumatic lithoclast is very cost effective, very cost effective. and wise also it's a uh, very effective. Very effective. Prashant sir, what is your routine in your theater? Uh, uh, you will have laser or uh, pneumatic? Honest. See, uh, time has changed and uh, ever since they have been coming to market, they, I have been using shock pulse, I am using triology, I am using high power laser. You are using triology also, sir? Yes. All, oh, all, tri all three. Very rich. Uh, but, but if you compare, I am little uh, obsessed about the new technology that Submis knows. See, right. but, but the problem with, uh, if I compare triology with shock pulse, I would score shock pulse over triology because of uh, the reusable probes and plus the sound is very much with the uh, trilogy, whereas uh, sound is less with this thing. So it's not annoying. And uh, otherwise, I, I think uh, uh, if you want to use, everybody is having a laser. So now, and especially in uh, infected kidneys and thin parenchyma, and when there is an inflamed kidneys, it, it doesn't have the impact on the wall. So it sucks. It's like a morselator. So, yeah. And especially in uh, lab-assisted PCNL and ectopic kidneys, it is very easy to suck out everything instead of going into the minor calyces and again make extra punctures. So right. I think a lot of advantage is there. So I would always prefer that you know when you are investing in the beginning, have a shock pulse and have a high power laser. That's all. Yes, sir. I'm happy that the senior surgeon in India, Dr. S. K. Paul, sir, is uh, commenting in the chat box. He said that thank you, sir, being uh, with us uh, offline. All hollow tubes are same. He mentioned even a straw works well. He said that whatever hollow tube is equally good. And other comment is that uh, over the question of Mushtaq, minimum size of the nephroscope through which lithoclast will be used is 12 French. Yes. Because uh, 8, 8 mm, I think 8 mm probe grows in that. The problem is length will be a little bigger and the flow will be a little less. These are the two comment uh, comments made by SK Pulsar. So next uh, we will go to the migration of the stone multiple tracks. This is a penultimate discussion. After that, there will not be much discussion. Uh, mm, sir also mentioned faster irrigation to start viral pool effect uh, and intermittent removal of nephroscope to remove fragments 
as shown by Sanjay Kadgi is quite often used for the evacuation. Like all of uh, us are accepting that if you have a difference of 5 to 6 French between the nephroscope and the sheath and if the something like ureteric catheter with multiple holes pushes water, most of the fragments they float by nature. We have seen in supine PCL much more but in prone also everybody accept that forceps may not be required. That point well taken. So Lame sir, why flexible nephroscope has not become very famous at all? Nobody uses that except for stent removal. They, uh, every PCNL surgeon like to use two or the three tracks to remove the stones because it is maneuverability is difficult and the possibly the laser fiber usage is difficult and most of us very confident to put uh, directly onto the stone second tract and take it out. What is your comment on multiple stones which are not accessible by the primary tract? Okay, we, we are talking about mini PCNL. And mini PCNL means that we have a limited diameter of our amplet sheath. The diameter is 15 French inside the amplet sheath. And this means that we can only use a flexible uterinoscope to have access to the other calices. And these flexible uteroscopes are very fragile. They are very expensive. And the vision is sometimes little poor if you apply them in a, through a mini percutaneous approach. Yes, sir. This is, the, this is the main reason why I only use flexible nephroscopy in the mini piece in their setting in very, very rare cases. Yes, sir. If, if we are talking about standard PCNL, the situation is completely different because we have a large uh, amplet sheath and we can use a conventional flexible cystoscope. And a conventional flexible cystoscope is a very good tool to have access to the other calices. In summary, this means my policy is to have multi-track PCNL. Yeah. I'm performing um, multiple punctures to all the peripheral stone masses and I try to avoid the flexible nephroscopy due to the very small flexible scopes which I should use. Yes. It, this is all, always uh, according to the small diameter of the amplet sheet. Yeah. Sir, Sabni, sir, if you wanted to do multiple, a lot of people say that adverse before because you will not have that uh, uh, stone backing up effect and blood. Whatever you are puncturing, blood only will come after the tract is established. But when you are in a fresh, you put three and by chance if three guide wires goes, you are happy that on that day, whether one, whether two, somehow you can remove it. What is your opinion on multi-track and what size the second and third one? Yeah. So, so what we, uh, what I, my advice is that if it is a big stagon and if you think that you are definitely going to need multiple tracks, then it yes. is better that you do it before. Yes. Because <clears throat> fresh kidney, because ultrasound, you cannot. You can't do ultrasound puncture halfway through because yes. the water irrigation is going on. The interface is lost and it is difficult to puncture uh, in between. Then it has to be a fluoro guided puncture. Yes, sir. So it is good idea to do multiple punctures. But if you are planning to do a single uh, track PCNL and yes, suddenly sir. some uh, thing goes in, then it, you can always, uh, those punctures are all stone guided punctures. You yes, don't sir. have yes. to inject contrast because it will all extra was it because you have already used one track. Yes, so sir. these are all stone guided punctures, which uh, uh, with judgment, there is uh, no problem at all. Yeah, sir, Kadgi, sir. Yes. Usually we, we prefer mini PC in it. Even in a stag on stone, first my approach will be the uh, middle calyx. When we approach to the middle calyx, even in a larger stone, it, uh, it will have a roomy system, you know. Most of the time, even with the mini PCNL, you may clear all the stones. Usually, I do not make the multiple tracks in my initial stage. Sometimes with the mini track, you can approach to the different calicial system and you can remove most of the stones. Yeah. If only needed, yes. then we proceed to the second track. Yes, sir. Sir, Prashant, sir, do you like to uh, make the the second and third track small and try to push the stone into pelvis and remove from the main track? Uh, okay. If at all, if at all, the infundibulum is uh, okay. Exactly, yes. That's the same thing I do. But I keep the guide wires to begin with. 
yeah. so that you know later on when the main stone is gone the main uh, amplicity is there so from above i try to push it or if it the infinity problem allows it or maybe making two fragments and then flush it to the main system and then take it out yes sir so we have last 10 minutes only so we will quickly round sir all of you have to answer that if you go with a small size 12 french sometimes a blood your puncture may not be the best puncture sometimes a blood will uh, 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 will be seeing and you the stone is mobile not big stone you are not able to focus on the stone you can pick it up with 18 french you don't mind increasing the size or any tip or you flush more then if you flush more it will become rirs if you do lacing with powder it becomes rirs it is a especially extra renal baggy pelvis in a small and if something bleeding happened uh, wa, 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 would you mind to change to larger and pick it out lame sir many no. times we see some blood no uh, i think uh, mini pcnl is uh, treatment modality where you need really a lot of patience um you are acting very slow your main aim is to avoid any bleeding uh, no rapid movements of your hands therefore you should spend time to make a very good um uh, procedure okay. and if the, if there is a larger stone it doesn't matter because according to the vacuum cleaner effect the stone automatically moves to the tip of your nephroscope okay the only thing you should um, know is that there should be a open space between ampla sheath and mini nephroscope yes sir um there are some companies that offer uh, um something to close the ampla sheath and to put the nephroscope through this closure this is not correct there should be a free outflow of the irrigation flow between nephroscope and ampla sheath okay and if you have uh, uh, if you focus on this it's no problem all stones are coming directly to your nephroscope okay sir sir sabne sir bleeding yeah, get, after mini 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 scope a little bit bleeding vision blood if you get blood and your vision is not proper by and large it is uh, the bleeding is from the tract what you right, mean right 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 that keeps on oozing in the system yes for your uh, vision is not proper yeah. so once you put the uh, appropriate size uh, sheath by and large over a period of time if you wait for few minutes it should stop yeah uh, the other thing is that you can increase the irrigation uh, height little bit sure so that uh, the vision clarity is there you don't have to worry because these are all open system okay uh, you, even if you uh, increase the height excessively give little bit pressure everything is going to come out the intrarenal pressures are not going to increase yeah. but your vision will uh, temporarily improve and then and you as you said the stone is freely mobile you can break into three fragments and then you can uh, take those uh, things yeah. out push the amplats uh, near to the stone so that you see the stone very clearly break it and then immediately those stones are come out yes, so sir. these are all small maneuvers which you can do same time the person can uh, push a saline from below so that uh, vision becomes pretty clear and these are the cases where you would like to put a nephrostomy after pc and then not the tubeless because the amplats if it is bleeding during the procedure it is better to be safer than the uh, than the uh, aggressive in uh, doing a tubeless pcnl yes sir uh, skadgi sir yes whenever there is a bleeding our main aim is to advance the these are usually from parenchymal bleeding so yeah. you must be sure that your sheet is inside the pelvic calcial system okay advancement of the sheet is the first point next is you can advance the sheet close to the stone you make a compact system you make it tight with the yeah. uh, change the stone with the sheet yeah narrow down the is, narrow down the problem yeah. go to it yeah yeah you fragment the stone it easily flushes out flushes out and Ar as sabnis sir said that you have to give a nephrostomy and all what my opinion is in bleeding cases if you do tubeless procedure that gives more tamponade effect than with yeah. the tube that is my personal experience yes sir prashant sir what is your opinion i uh, see uh, i see what what sabni says is right because you know you must find out the reason for bleeding first of all whether it's infundibulum tear or whether it's gross uh, 
cut in the system everything but i don't mind you know it's never make a prestige issue unless the tract and then take it out at one go and put an nephrostomy yes sir sir before we ask the last question uh, two couple of questions from navin reddy is there any cheaper 12 french nephroscope in india other than corastage and wolf i have not heard of only thing is shali is there which is around 2.2 lakhs but is again a european country uh, anything cut ki sir please yes. i think there is one uh, company uh, apple apple sciences uh -huh. i think they are the ch cheaper one okay apple yes. sciences is a yes. same yes. like uh, uh, wolf uh, basin sir ka apple company yes yes yeah same same basin sir ka okay they they make lot of uh, uh, this thing and second question is asking is uh, that apple also is uh, assembled in germany is all yeah, germany germany only yes sir same, same but price. it is all basically uh, if you see there is nothing local everything is uh, everything is uh, unique uh, yeah but they are all assembled at different places and they give their own name yes sir so nabin reddy is also asking what is the most cost effective homium laser uh, to my knowledge because i am using laser in my three hospital uh, uh, alanger has come with 17 lakhs now that is the lowest uh, official company which gives uh, lowest cost uh, a lot of people are using in north india they are giving positive feedback uh, time has to tell otherwise uh, usually it costs around 20 lakhs and madhav tiwari asked uh, how many cases can shock pulse probe be used uh, for and cost for probe sabni sir quick it all depends on what sort of uh, cases which you are doing previous one which they were giving was uh, used to last for about 8 10 cases but now the olympus has come out with the carbon plated uh, probe mm -hmm. which is much sturdier and that lasts uh, much longer okay around 20 Depends cases on the stone volume also and stone volume and stain so how not ask the number that. of cases in rirs and this because stone volume is the most yeah, important that is what all depends that, that all depends on how much time you used for how much difficulty right. you had uh, sir swin lam me sir last question for all of you because we have time after that we will see your ultrasound uh, uh, video uh, puncture uh, the the nephrostomy tube and stent the standard thing is if you have perforated pcs you may put nephrostomy without any doubt but why why in bleeding nephrostomy tube but still it works whether it produces some amount of tamponade we don't know many of the seniors recommend that if you are anticipating bleeding bleeding you put nephrostomy tube when nephrostomy tube you put do you put stent in routine cases or not two questions a and b this is the last question uh, i prefer i prefer to um, put a nephrostomy tube after mini pcnl of course a tubeless pcnl can be done but from my point of view the very small silicone 12 french nephrostomy tube is really an advantage it's good to have the nephrostomy tube for one day inside the calicial system and i don't cannot recognize any disadvantage okay i don't i don't use any sealant and i don't like to insert a double j stent because from my point of view double j stent is associated with a lot of irritative symptoms okay and uh, these symptoms can be avoided by placement of a small nephrostomy tube uh, do you clamp for few hours after surgery it depends of the clearness of the urine if the urine is clear the nephrostomy tube is open but if i see that there is a se more severe bleeding it can be clamped for 10 or 15 minutes and then we can have a look sir sabni sir yeah my answer is that most of the cases mini pcnl which are straight forward we do tubeless pcnl without a uh, double j stent so we keep a ureteric catheter for 24 hours and then everything is out if there is a bleeding excessive bleeding then why we put pcnl uh, nephrostomy tube as sanjay said that uh, the tamponade effect will occur the tamponade effect certainly will occur but the problem is that during that tamponade effect the blood which gets uh, collected is going to go into the pelvic calicial system and that blood eventually has to drain from the ureteric catheter it has to liquefy and that takes time and during that period there can be blood tinge urine from the urethral catheter and there could be colic there could be some pain if okay. the pc system gets distended and therefore in a situation like this we clamp the nephrostomy for a few hours and open it all that uh, liquefied blood along with urine actually is drained out 
and next day you remove everything there is no morbidity at all yes sir kadgi sir you already told the answer yeah no uh, we have been doing routinely that our cases are too blessed we do not keep nephrostomy too unless that there is a pyonephrosis if there is we uh, need to have a second look yeah. otherwise we don't keep nephrostomy too about 10% of the cases like 10 to 15 mm stone lower calyx stone we do total tubeless we yeah. keep ureteric catheter overnight and patient will be discharged we remove the ureteric catheter about 90% of the cases we place double j stent as people travel a lot they come from the remote area for the safety of the patient then we keep a double j stent for few weeks okay. that's our routine practice prashant sir uh say routinely i don't uh, keep a tube but uh, if there is a need and when you find out something is wrong in the system or maybe this morbid kidneys i keep an nephrostomy for about 48 hours okay. but but uh, if there's a complex stone and if i feel that you know we have to keep the stent for some time then at least for a week i keep a stent and no nephrostomy <laughs> Yes, sir. The uh, uh, la, uh, we did get the last question. The stents which we use are one fifty rupees, two fifty rupees stents. Yes, I hope all of us are using the same. No right. disadvantage on that. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, uh, Lemme, sir. Also, is bit costly. Yeah. Uh, the the cook cook has seven hundred and fifty rupees. Whenever there is some lot of infections, and that week we change to a little company stents. We don't know psychological satisfaction. Now one fifty is also costly. It has come down below hundred. Ah, below hundred because they have manufactured themselves. Yes. Yesterday they were telling that uh, six crores worth year. Bayerad is manufacturing the uh, the stents, and they are they are sending across uh, 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 the abroad. Oh, so, uh, Lamma sir, uh, we like to see your ultrasound guided puncture. Uh, we have uh, can, we, nearly 550 audience are there, and present at the moment 150 audience are there. So uh, uh, we will we will listen your ultrasound guided puncture and then conclude because we have crossed one hour 20 minutes, uh, which is slightly higher than our routine time. So we'll uh, can you share it, sir? We will see it. Yes. Yes. yes I, I need I need the permission to share. Please could you? Hey, yeah, co-host. Make co-host, please quick. uh co-host sir let you close i need permission yeah yeah i am giving just a second i am making you co-host automatically it will uh, sorry yeah yes sir done yeah this is okay uh this is the area where the puncture is done the patient is in prone position and now we have to manage a three dimensional uh, problem the first step is to apply a mixture of contrast dye and methylene blue in order to have a good um, a dilation of the calicial tract then the needle is put onto the skin of the patient and the tip of the needle is exactly put in the target area of the lower calyx this is done with a special x-ray table no c arm you can also do this with c arm and now we need the depth of the puncture we don't know the depths and the depths is determined by means of ultrasound we have a special ultrasound probe we know the best direction the needle is taken away and now i can determine the depth of the puncture by means of ultrasound this is the only thing i do instead of bullice technique the needle is uh, pushed forward and now I, i exactly know that this is the best position small incision of the skin is done and after that the needle is inserted with the ultrasound probe and by means of ultrasound i can determine the depth of the puncture and i don't uh, need the bull eyes technique or something like that the puncture is only done under ultrasound guidance the ultrasound probe is put away and if the puncture is successful there is a clear urine a blue colored urine coming out of the puncture cannula this is a good sign of course and now the very cheap stainless steel guide wire is inserted through the puncture cannula 
And beginning from this step, I'm using fluoroscopy. Why methylene blue, sir? Uh, this is easier uh, to detect. It is not really needed. The tip of the needle is placed in the caliceal system. And after that, the puncture needle is taken out. The dilation is done under fluoroscopy control. This cannot be done under ultrasound guidance. And now you can see the single step dilator. This is stainless steel with a sh sharp tip. You turn it around, it facilitates the movement of the dilator and the tip of the dilator is pushed forward until you reach the caliceal system. This is really a single step procedure. And after that, you take the stainless steel ampla sheath. You can use it for decades, really. There, there is really no alteration of the ampla sheath. It exactly fits to the dilator. Now you hold the dilator with your left hand and push forward the ampla sheath with your right hand. And this is also done under fluoroscopic guidance. The tip of the ampla sheath should be placed into the caliceal system. You can clearly see. And after that, the dilator is taken out. Dilator is taken out and the uh, guide wire remains in place for a few seconds. I first have a look with the mini nephroscope next to the guide wire but after I confirmed the correct position, the guide wire is taken out because guide wire is not useful for the vacuum cleaner effect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a wonderful Mr. shot. Can I ask one question to Dr. Lame? Yes, sir. Yes. Please, sir. Uh, the all the design, what uh, the nephroscope sheet, the ampla sheet, what you are shown in Wolf and in the previous uh, design of stores, they all had irrigation channel attached to the sheet which has never been yes. used. So yes, now, you are right. In a, in it is new, not needed. To design of stores that that uh, the irrigation channel is gone. Yes. But Wolf is still persisting to have this uh, irrigation uh, channel uh, on the on yes. the sheet. So why is that? The reason probably is that they need a little more time, but we don't need this yes. connection. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sir, actually we have forgotten the super perk sheet also. It is also beveled sheet by Shah, Pro, Shah sheet. It is also good. Many of us are using. Yes. And the only thing is that the steel one is a little smoother. Whereas uh, when you are traveling from one calyx to other calyx or going into pelvis, sometimes shear effect will be there, but it is very cost effective. It is only 30, 35,000. A simple case is little dilated system. It sucks mm -hmm. out all the fragments very well. Anybody mm -hmm. using suction in PCNL. If you compare I, one, one thing about this plastic and the steel, if you see the steel and when you are using fluoroscopy for checking the fragments and other things, the radiation is going to be much higher with the steel sheet rather than the plastic yes. sheet. Is it? Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, okay. Is it? Uh, 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 anybody using suction in PCNL uh, like this? Uh, sir, Lame, sir, in, in Germany, in Western countries, European countries, uh, any suction in PCNL is new, new in RIRS, uh, in PCNL, Petra system, they are coming. Uh, okay. Any any comment on that, sir? The original mini PCNL technique does not use any suction. The original mini PCNL system is an open system. Open yeah. system means that there's a free outflow. And if you have a free outflow, it works very, very well. But oh. uh, you are right. If you are using suction, probably you can um, decrease the operative time. Yeah. Um, maybe it's a certain advantage. We have to ask Professor Sek. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, submissor shock pulse uh, is also part of the suction in that. The, you are claiming yeah, so, advantage. So if you see in PCNL, you have a suction at two places. One is either on the sheet where you suck out the fragments or you yeah. have a suction on the probe. Yeah, yeah, yeah There yeah. are only two ways you can uh, put it on the this. Yeah. I feel the suction on the probe is far better because as you fragment it out, it gets sucked out. Okay. And we have seen that even in 1.8 mm or 1.9 yeah. mm probe size, uh, the the lumen is such that all the fragments can get sucked out. But of course, uh, Prashant is using uh, this clear petra sheet which has suction. And there are many people who are using it and they are quite happy with the suction on the sheet. 
Yes. Uh, like super perk sheet and clear. Yeah, super perk I am also using. I am happy. Like it sucks. Uh, sir, Katki, sir, any role of suction you feel in the future? No, usually I use irrigation pump, which works as a suction tool. Yeah, yeah. Once you trap in the stone, you trap the stone with the uh, amplast sheet and you take out the telescope. And at the, when you take out the telescope, at the same time, retrograde saline push is done. That evacuates the stone much faster. Oh, oh yes. Uh, somebody is uh, saying that Bhargavardhan Reddy from my place is close friend of me. With steel sheath, uh, if you put the nephroscope and bend in an acute angle, scope may bend. Uh, I am not understanding, probably not. Any any comment on that? Uh, the complex sheath versus uh, the steel sheath, when you are using nephroscope, is there any chance nephroscope can get damaged? Very unlikely. Yeah. Very unlikely. I mean, I am not uh, getting it. Uh, just to take the questions uh, quickly. I am uh, homium laser. Uh, a patient came with hematuria. That is a theory question. After two weeks, we don't want to go in that. So, because of the time, uh, this thing, I really thank all the speakers, Dr. Lame, sir. Uh, the, your video, last video, is very crisp and very short. Uh, two, two, five minutes is like ice cream, and uh, it, it, it went well, so well. Uh, highly appreciated for that video and uh, all your uh, inputs. And today I came to know that you invented the mini mini nephroscope. And when I was going through the history, everywhere your name is there. I am really fortunate to conduct this program with you. Uh, a lot of audience in India will see this program afterwards also. Uh, we thank uh, um, very much for your inputs uh, regarding the whatever I asked you have given instead of not going to the other areas. Sabnis sir, as usual, uh, <laughs> great teacher, friendly answers you give. And in fact, you mentioned some facts also. Uh, Katgi sir, uh, thanks for getting those instruments, especially guide wire and initial dilator. Uh, that shows your enthusiasm. Very I hope we are passed in the exam. Yeah. No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Prashant sir, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for being with us and giving valuable inputs. So, hope uh, some other time we will do such programs uh, continuously so that juniors, because continuously only one thing happens is juniors coming up. Yeah. Uh, every year juniors come up so science never becomes old and everybody is interested in PCNL because uh, I feel without PCNL uh, there is no endourology uh, even uh, anywhere in the world if PCNL is I, I feel after doing uh, more than 5000 RIRS that uh, PCNL is a mandatory procedure and one should know all the aspects of PCNL much into depth uh, 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 it is very cost effective method of treating uh, approximately 15 to 20 mm size stones even today entire world. Yes. Thank you very much all the speakers for being with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have opened Khadgi Institute of Indo-Urology where I started working. Those who are interested in Indo-Urology, people can join me in Nepal anytime. Yes, we have a short course of two weeks. So we can you can disseminate for the yes. newcomers who yes, are interested to share my technique in Kathmandu Nepal. If anybody wants the number of Kadgi, sir, it may not be appropriate to announce. You ask me, I will give the number. <laughs> because if you announce, then it will be open. And uh, uh, anything to say, sir? Uh, so on behalf of all the faculty, I must thank you sir, for sir. your enthusiasm. I think. Uh, the, you started this uh, pure urology and within no time you have got uh, 6,000 members, yeah, on, board 6, members on, your, uh, on your uh, Facebook uh, board and within short time you have uh, crossed the 100 uh, programs, more than 90 faculties. So that uh, shows your enthusiasm and passion. I That's think right. we will be privileged to have only 10% of your enthusiasm. We will be really happy <laughs> to have uh, that sort of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of all the faculty, I must congratulate you for this achieving this feat and uh, extremely thankful for giving us this opportunity to be part of this 100th uh, program, which is uh, one important milestone yes, what sir. you have created. Thank you, sir. Thank in you. fact, uh, I must mention that uh, in my career from 2006, uh, every every alternate year, Sabni, sir, identified my uh, my technical skill in RIRS. And when I did uh, in Nadiad, uh, along with Oliver Traxer, my RIRS, where I have learnt RIRS, uh, that was the best moment in my life. He used to come to the conferences and observe my movements and then he encouraged me uh, by giving uh, initially when he was uh, uh, school, uh, this uh, board uh, of education, 
and then the, it really uplifted my career in RIRS. Thank you very much, sir, being my mentor and teacher. And with all your wishes, we will continue this program and uh, help the juniors for learning the surgical techniques. Thank, Thank you. you. I have Thank taken you. the photograph. I will send. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.